Hey friend, you don't need another quick fix diet to lose weight or crazy plan. What you need is Jesus and the scriptures I'm sharing today. I know that circling that mountain of trying to reach your fitness goals, circling that mountain of gaining and losing and trying to find a dieting answer can feel like nothing works and you can literally come to the end of yourself. But today I'm serving up the answer and it comes with a freebie friend. Stay with me to the end. Okay. Before I dive in, I have to ask you, are you on the wait list for the fit God's way 30 day transformation course? I am so excited. I mean, it's February. <clears throat> if you're listening in real time, and if you're watching the video, you will notice that I'm wearing a very brightly orangey peach shirt because I am feeling that spring summer coming on and nothing motivates me like sunshine and summer and spring. And don't you just love that time of year? I want you to th this year to be the year that you do it. So right now I want you to go to Kim Dolan forward slash fit God's way waitlist and get on this course waitlist. Okay. Because we are going to learn everything. Let me tell you a little bit about it. All right. The transformation course is the exact, the fit God's way transform 30 day transformation course is the exact roadmap that cost me years of countless diets and hours of working out to learn what I'm going to teach you in just 30 days. You are going to get so much out of this. It is going to blow your mind you will be transformed mind, body, and soul fully. Okay. And it's not just, it's a 30 day transformation because we are going to dive in deep together, but it is a lifetime transformation because it will forever change you knowing what the word of God says and walking, learning how to build a plan for your daily life. So make sure you're signed up at kimdolanletto.com forward slash fit God's way course waitlist. Okay. Fit God's way waitlist. Excuse me. Okay, let's dive in. Here are scriptures that are going to help you lose weight, okay? And I really focus them around three main phrases. So write these down, okay? Take out that Bible, take out that journal. If you have, just like open up a note on your phone and write the scriptures down, girl, because these are valuable, okay? Number one, I want you to write this. Spot the trap. Food and fitness are a spiritual battle, okay? Okay. I think we can just feel like, why am I sabotaging myself? Why do I feel like this? Why am I down? Why isn't anything working? Girl, it is a spiritual battle. I think somebody just went like, oh, she's right. Because it's the truth. Your battles with food in your body are, the devil knows all about him. And he knows exactly how to get you. This is a spiritual battle that you are going to win with the word. Okay. Galatians 5, 16 through 17 tells us, but I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. Did anyone just have a light bulb moment? Okay. So did you know that, that fitness and this whole food thing and losing weight and feeling good in your body and the motivation to work out. Did you know all of that is a battle between your flesh and your spirit? That is the truth. Okay. You can do this food, dieting, fitness thing. One of two ways you can do it in your flesh, or you can do it in the spirit. I wrote something in faith inspired transformation that I just have to share with you because I had a come to Jesus moment with this and it changed my life. And I pray to God that this encourages you. Here it is. I used to pray, God, please help me. I need more of you. But I realized God was saying, I'm here. You already have all of me, but do I have all of you? And friend, this whole fitness thing, he did not have it. The whole food thing, he did not have it. I mean, I don't know if that clicks in with anybody else, but it was like, I would go to church. I loved God. I did everything else, but I did not do this fitness thing with him. Okay. So think about this. When we walk with God here and we pursue him, we feed our spirit and it gets stronger. But when we're doing it in the flesh, our spirit is malnourished and weak. And the flesh continually makes the same bad decisions. Okay. They're disappointing decisions and they leave us feeling like powerless. That self-sabotage cycle, right? 
Our flesh is driven by emotions and it doesn't care what it wants. It just wants what it wants right now, right? One of my favorite stories that depicts this so well is this, okay? Now, my daughter, Giovella Sophia Leto, such a beautiful name, she is now 16. But when she was three, I shared a story before about her and we were a target, okay? She was begging me that day for a toy. And I watched my sweet little girl, normally well-behaved child, throw herself on the floor, kicking and screaming, flailing her little arms up and down, very upset. She was throwing a fit and I knew it was a defining moment for us because there wasn't like any room for me to walk by her in that target line. I, I had to literally step over her, okay? So when I did that, she stopped crying and like our eyes locked and she knew it was a defining moment. Like mom's not gonna change her mind. So she got off the floor and that was it. So I want you to think about your flesh, just like my three-year-old daughter, throwing a fit, you know, scrolling through social media. Why is she so fit? And I'm not, why, why does this, like, it looks like it's so easy for her or throwing a fit, like, man, I just want to eat that. And your, your flesh is screaming for it. It's like, it overpowers you. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, you have to see that this is a war between your flesh and your spirit. Okay. So When I was a new Christian, I remember hearing a pastor talk about the flesh warring against the spirit. And maybe you're a new Christian and you're like, Kim, what are you talking about? I had no idea what the pastor meant back then. And so if you don't either, friend, I've got you, okay? So as I have walked further with God and grown closer to him, I now see the ways in which my flesh bosses me around. Can I get an amen? Like, I know I'm not the only one that is like, oh, it's Friday and, you know, pizza sounds so good, or like, I've had a hard day, I just want fill in your blank, right? Or I'm tr- I've am i been trying so hard to lose weight, and I go on social media, and this lady just makes it look so easy, and how can she look like, you know what I mean, right? Oh my gosh. Okay, so <clears throat> I want to be quick to point out, though, that even though this is a battle between the flesh and the spirit, that doesn't mean we're going to get it right every time, Okay. That doesn't mean that we're like, oh, now that I'm in the spirit, I have like the new secret weight loss program, right? No, Jesus is not a genie. This is not, this is not how that works. So we will miss it and we will cave in and we will eat what we don't, we will do what we don't want to do. But what the spirit helps us do is to get stronger and stronger. And it helps us not to fall into that food guilt trip. Now, I know somebody needed to hear that because I bet someone's listening right now and let me know if that's you. And you're like, I can't believe I just blew it. I ate something bad. I shouldn't have eaten it. I feel so bad about myself, friend. Show me in the Bible, go in your Bible and show me where does it say that you're supposed to live on a diet and I'm picking up my big old Bible and feel guilty. Where does it say that in in the Bible? that you're supposed to feel terrible about the way you ate. That is not of God. Okay. So we need to stop that because all it does is it just sends us into a hole where we're like, oh, well, I messed up. I'm just going to throw the whole weekend away. Right. I'm just going to eat. Now I'm going to eat everything I want. Like now it's on. No, you've got to stop that. Okay. And we see that it was just a choice. And then we choose the power of the Holy spirit to choose better next time. We look at it like, okay, that was just a choice. Like I enjoyed it. I'm not going to feel guilty about it, but did I need to eat that much or, you know, or just completely plan. Like I plan once a week to have chips and salsa. I love them. I know I want, there's absolutely nothing wrong with enjoying them, but I put parameters around it. I don't need to eat it every day. I eat it in proper portions. So do you understand what I'm saying? So when you walk with the, with the Holy spirit and you're, relying on the fruits of the spirit, you, you can have peace. You can have joy. You can have self-control. You can have faithfulness. You are not supposed to, you got to spot the trap. Okay. It's a battle between your flesh and your spirit. So I just want to be quick to point out that that doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect one day. What it means is that you realize you're never going to be perfect because only God is perfect and you choose grace. 
and you choose to just do one day at a time with God <clears throat> and make each decision the best you can for that day. So girl, I know someone needs to hear this. Give yourself a break. Okay. Number two, write this down. God's power working in you is bigger than your temptations. Now, when I'm talking about temptations, I'm talking about the very thing that, you know, you that's like your, that's where it all falls apart. Like if, when I do this, then I'm just, it's on, like, I can't have one, you know, cookie. I have to eat the whole bag, or I, I can't do this because then it, this happens. Like some people, you know, a lot of people will say like, what about alcohol? Like some people can have one glass of wine. Some people can't have one drink. They have to have the whole bottle, right? So we need to be very, very careful about where, where God has put his finger on and everyone knows, okay, this is all different for all of us. And this is why only God can help us because he's the only one that can come in and help each of us individually right where we need him because all of us are tempted differently. Okay. So I want you to write down first Corinthians 10, 13, and it says, no temptation is overtaking you. That is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may, may be able to endure it. So I want you to do something that I did that was incredibly helpful. Okay. I want you to get out a piece of paper and write down what tempts you and speak first Corinthians 10, 13 over it. Okay. Bible ref says God's promise. That promise says that we can, in the power of the Holy Spirit, respond to any given temptation by resisting it. So before you go to open up the refrigerator or go to order that thing or go to do whatever it is, I want you to pause for a minute, pause for a minute with God and say, no temptation. This is if you have not planned to do this or plan to enjoy it, or this is a place where you are gluttonous, like I I've had places in my life where I was gluttonous and I was like, I can't even go there because I know what will happen if I do. So I'm talking about extreme behaviors. I'm talking about temptations that, you know, are taking you away from the godly woman you want to be and the healthy goals that you want to reach. Okay. So think about it like this. God promises us that if we are in the Holy Spirit, we can respond to any given temptation by resisting it because of that scripture. So hold on to that scripture and speak it over the thing that is tempting you. Think about Jesus in Matthew 4, 1 through 11, where he was tempted by the devil. It says, and this is after he had been fasting for 40 days. At that time, Jesus was led by the spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Did you hear that? At that time, Jesus was led by the spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. We will be tempted by, by the spirit. It's our test. Okay. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but let's continue reading. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and afterward was hungry. And the tempter approached him and said, if you are the son of God command that these stones become loaves of bread. What I'm trying to tell you is that we are going to be tempted and in the power of the Holy spirit even if it's the spirit tempting us, it's like a muscle, the more like what you don't feed will die. Okay. What you don't feed will die. The cravings that you have for sugar, the cravings you have for alcohol, for chocolate, for whatever they are, even my chip cravings have greatly diminished. Okay. Because I realize that I am not supposed to be under the control of anything. No, no temptation has overtaken me. So I want you to start walking in your power and authority in Christ. Okay. So what is that thing that, you know, is standing in the way of you being healthy? Like right now, picture it. If it was gone, you would reach your healthy weight, your healthy goals. If that was gone, you would get to the gym. Maybe it's too much social media, too much TV, um, caring way too much what other people think about the way you look. You're too afraid to go to the gym or do a class because you feel like, what will people think of me? I don't have anything to wear. Think crazy things like that. Like that is how, I shouldn't say crazy things because they sound crazy when I say them, but I have felt every one of those. And I know a lot of you listening have as well. Okay. So we need to take authority over the foods, drinks, and excuses in our lives that are tempting us to do the things that we really don't want to do. Okay. You have the power of the Holy spirit working in you. 
So while we are in the flesh, we will fail. Absolutely count on it. But failure isn't fatal, okay? So don't get don't get stuck in the mistake because it's practice. Start to look at it as practice. Like right now, if you totally blew it, just be like, okay, I'm not, I'm not that one bad decision I made. Like, look at the whole thing. Like, I'm going forward with God. Like, I am just drawing a line in the sand and like, that's over. I'm going forward with God, okay? So think about it like this. Like I said, temptation or this whole battle between like being tempted, it is, think about your flesh and your spirit, your, your spirit, it's like a muscle. And I want you to think about being in the power of the Holy Spirit, that the more you walk in the spirit, it's like a muscle. You use it, you choose it, and it gets more and more, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger, right? So every time you turn away from that thing that had so much temptation over you, you're getting stronger. And I want to share that transforming my unhealthy, overweight body was not easy. So I fully understand the frustration and the temptation to give up. But I also know what it feels like to be on the other side of the battle. And my prayer is that you will know this freedom as well, because God desires health for you, friend. So don't quit on yourself, okay? Someone needs to hear this right now. So if you're doing something, come back to me. Don't quit on yourself. And don't stop believing that God will bless your efforts. Go all in with him, okay? Number three, write this down. When you're in the flesh, you're alone. But because you said yes to Jesus, you're not alone anymore. When you said yes to Jesus and accepted him as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit came in to dwell in you and you have the fruit of the Spirit. And that is how you can live with the gifts, the fruits of the Spirit. And we're going to talk about that because don't you want peace? Don't you want joy? Don't you want self-control? Don't you want faithfulness, perseverance? Like, I want all of those things. And I want love. I want to just be happy each day to be alive and just embrace the day instead of thinking about what I ate and what I'm wearing and the workout I missed. And, oh my gosh, I didn't do this. And I didn't like, we have got to walk away from the worldly conversation of dieting. God did not create this sisters. We've got to walk away from that. Okay. <clears throat> the term white knuckling for diets rings so true. Picture holding on to a bar. Like right now, if you had to do like, remember, and I don't know if you had to do this in elementary school, but I had to, we had to do like this bar hang. I want you to picture hanging onto a bar with all your might and your little arms are just shaking to death and your knuckles were all white, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. I have to get a sip of water. So I want you to picture that because the term white knucklings, white knuckling for diet rings so true. It's you in your own flesh hanging on by a thread, <laughs> forcing something to happen and you're barely hanging on. It's just like one like little bad stressful event before you just binge, right? So <clears throat> I'm just being real, right? Like it's just when you're white knuckling diets, it's just, you know, it's just a matter of time because God did not create that unhealthy twisted, warped relationship with food, the world did. Okay. So dieting doesn't work because God isn't in it where, like I said, where in the Bible does it say you have to eat to look like this, or you should be punishing yourself because you ate that. No, God made food for us to enjoy with a grateful heart, with a thankful heart, but not a guilty one and not a gluttonous one. Do you see, like, look at the spectrum. Like if there's guilt on one side and gluttony on the other we want to be in the grateful area. Like, God, I'm just grateful for this food. And when you pause and you pray and you eat from a grateful heart, the guilt goes away. The gluttony goes away because you have invited Jesus to the table and you are free. You are in the spirit. Okay. So let's talk about this. Uh, God gave us food to enjoy, but the world gave us this overly restrictive diets, elimination diets, and oversized food portions. Does it sound like they've set their business up for success? It sure does to me. That's why it's a $72 billion a year industry. Okay. So it's so unhealthy and it's trained us to think of food in a guilty or prideful way. Here's an example. Guilt says, I ate this and I'm so mad at myself. I was so bad. And I overate, like it just wakes you up in the middle of the night and you are just beating yourself up. Okay. That is not of God. You need to speak the truth of God over that. Okay. And pride says, 
I eat so clean. I'm better than other people. They're weak. I'm not like, I legit remember when I was in the fitness industry, like competing in fitness. I remember we would go to this place called <clears throat> macaroni grill. And I would just see people like, can I have another bread basket? Can I have another bread basket? And I would just look at them like, wow. Cause I was prideful and I, and I'm, I'm embarrassed to admit that, but I just want to be real with you that I've been on both sides of the spectrum. I've been the person that's like, could I have butter for that bread? Could I have more bread? Is there enough bread in the world? And I've been the person that was like, oh my gosh, I would never do that. Like, so God has clearly used all sides of my story to give me great emotional range and empathy for people because I understand fully what it's like to be on both sides of the spectrum. And then I also know what it feels like to be right where he wants me to be. And that is under grace, not guilt, not gluttony. Okay. So write down this. Oh, this is a key point. You're not bad. If you eat unhealthy, I'm going to say that again for the beautiful girl who probably has tears in her eyes right now, because she feels so bad about what she looks like and how she eats. She needs to hear this. You're not bad if you eat unhealthy and you're not good if you do, if you eat healthy. Okay. So you're not a bad person if you eat bad and you're not a good person. If you eat good, you are free in Christ from all this crazy dieting garbage. Go look at Galatians 5, 1. Okay. Stand therefore firm because Christ has set you free. Don't submit again to a yoke of bondage or slavery. That's what it says. Dieting is slavery. Thinking about what you look like all the time, slavery. It's bondage. You are in bondage to something. It is controlling your life. Okay. It is so unhealthy. And I don't want that for any of you because I live there and it is a terrible place to be. Okay. Write down the scripture and pray to repair your relationship with food and ask God to help you retrain your taste buds to want God made foods, because that is when you crave the foods he made for your body, you will actually be satisfied and healthy. And you will feel so much better. You won't have these crazy energy crashes, highs and lows. Okay. Galatians 5, 22, 23 says, now think about these words as I say them, where, which one do you need most? Write it down and circle it. But the fruit of the spirit, and that's the spirit, the Holy spirit that God, when you said yes to Jesus, the Holy spirit came to dwell inside you. And this is the fruit that he wants to produce in your life. This is available to you. You have this. Okay. Okay. Love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And it says against such, such things, there is no law. So for me, the one I think I need the most sometimes is peace. Peace for the fact that I am, you know, doing the best I can and maybe other people are doing better and whatever, but I don't need to compare myself to anyone. Uh, you just need to be you and just do the best you're doing. Right. So I feel like peace with like, I'm trying to have a podcast or trying to create courses. Like I, I have such big dreams to serve you guys with so much excellence that sometimes I could be really hard on myself because it's not getting done fast enough. Or I'm like, and I'm like pretty much a one man show. I mean, I have an assistant who Delana, who's amazing. She works five hours a week and I love her and appreciate her, but I can only do so much as one person. And so sometimes I just feel like my peace starts to suffer but God reminds me that his burden, his yoke is light. His burden is easy, right? So we need to think about that with food. Like, which one do you need? Do you want to have joy with food? Do you want to actually sit down and enjoy your food and then not have any guilt? I mean, that's how you should live. That is what God has given you. Okay. And that is my prayer for you, friend. <clears throat> From Galatians 5, through 23, I wrote a quote that I love. And I want to share it with you. You've probably seen it or read it before. If you're familiar with my stuff, it says no diet can give you the spirit of self-control. Only God can do that. No diet, no fitness plan can give you love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Only God can do that. So we need to stop looking for answers in the world and turn right to the word, right to God. Amen. Okay. So every believer has the ability to have joy and peace and self-control of food. And, but to see it produced in your life, we've got to be like Paul in Corinthians. Okay. <clears throat> Paul in Corinthians, like who loves Paul? I mean, I like I've, I'm in first Corinthians right now. I just, I was just reading first Corinthians this morning and I'm like, my gosh, I love, I, I, I want to be like Paul. 
you know? And so I want you to think if, if you don't know about Paul, he, he wrote two thirds roughly of the new Testament and in first Corinthians nine, it's a whole chapter. It's called the need for self-discipline. And he talks about how he, how he brought his body under subjection and how he disciplined his body so that his body didn't tell him what to do, but he told his body what to do. He also said that he, you know, in subsequent chapters that he did exactly what he didn't want to do, which brings us right back to number one, the flesh wars against the spirit, the spirit wars against the flesh. It makes us do what we don't want to do, but that doesn't mean that we stay down. And that doesn't mean that we can't get stronger. And that doesn't mean that we continue to let it win. Okay. All right. So let's talk about first Corinthians nine 24. This is nine 24 through nine 27. And it might surprise some of you to hear this because this is called the need for self-discipline. So let me read it to you because it is so good. Okay. Do you not know that in all in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize run in such a way as to get the prize. Okay. I want, where do you need to run? Like you need to win the prize. Is it with getting to the gym? Is it with eating? Is it with better sleeping? Is it with getting in the word? Is it putting your worth in G like worth in the word word? The, I can't talk your worth in Jesus. I want you to, I'm thinking about those seven W's as I'm talking. So I'm going to start again. Do you not know that in a race, all the, the runners run, but only one gets the prize run in such a way as to get the prize girl, light a fire and run your race. Okay. First Corinthians 9 25 says everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Okay. That's why we are fit. God's way fit for his glory, fit to fulfill his calling on our lives. And then 26 says nine twenty first Corinthians nine 26 says, therefore I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. I want you to think about that. I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave. What he's saying is I control my body. My body does not control me. Our fl our flesh bosses us around. Think about my daughter, any toddler, if you have a child screaming for their pacifier, their bottle, their cookie, their toy, right? It's in these moments that you need to remember that you're an overcomer. And I'm going to share a scripture with you. I want you to write down first John five, four through five tells us for everyone and sister, that means you too for us. Okay. Who, for everyone who's been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God? I think God looks at us and is like, girl, you have the power. You have my power working in you. You can overcome a donut. Okay. You could say no to the cookies and the break room or the candy that you pass every day that you pick up this stuff. And, and I'm not saying that food is bad. Okay. I'm not saying that, that, that you can't enjoy that stuff once in a while. I'm talking to the girl who knows she needs to give it up. I'm talking to the girl who knows that one donut turns into a dozen or one piece of candy turns into a whole bag. I'm talking about the very thing that God has put his finger on in your life that you know is, has got to go. If you're ever going to get healthy, if you're ever going to get fit, it's this thing that, you know, that God is saying, girl, you've got like, let that go. You have the power of God working in you. You are stronger than this. I have made a way for you to escape temptation. I've given you the fruit of the spirit walk in it. That just reminded me of that scripture. I love it so much. It says, you'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way walk in it. We need to do that. Okay. All right. So connecting to God through prayer and his word, that's how we overcome our flesh. Okay. That's us building those flesh muscles, like beating those flesh muscles. Okay. We're building our spirit. So we're going to take out the flesh by making our spirit stronger. We can't do it. Like you can, I have been like single digit body fat. Okay. But my flesh was so weak. I love how that thing, I don't know why it does that thumbs up. I'm so sorry. I have to fix that. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, if you're watching the video on YouTube, you're like, oh, okay, I get it. If you're listening to the podcast, you're like, what is she talking about? I was just talking in the video did like this thumbs up thing anyway. So 
I want you to just think about that, that connecting to God and his word, that's how we overcome our flesh. The spirit has to be stronger and stronger and stronger. And the more you say yes to the flesh and no, or yes to the spirit and no to the flesh, you will get there. Okay. Cause diets are not the answer changing how we view food and ourselves and the truth about all of this. What would God do? What does God say? That's our answer. So think about what you eat on a regular basis, because healthy is so much more than like a look you're trying to obtain. It's a lifestyle you're trying to maintain so that you can do all that God has called you to do, right? Throughout the day, think about what you can eat. This is a big diet switch, okay? Think about what you can eat instead of what you can't. So when you get up and you're like thinking about you're going to eat that day, think about all the things you can eat. Like, oh, I could have this Ezekiel bread with nut butter and honey, and I can have this, this, you know, whatever, instead of like, well, I can't have that. And I can't, cause then it makes you feel like, oh, I can't eat anything. And then you just feel like, oh, I just want to go eat a pizza or something terrible. Right. So we got to retrain our brain to see, let's think about what we can eat. Okay. So focusing on what I can eat instead of what I can't or shouldn't helps me make good decisions when buying and preparing food. And I hope that helps you too, because focusing on what we can eat and not relying on diet programs that only cause all the imbalance and all of that stuff, it just causes you to war against the spirit more. So I want you to kind of take your power back and be like, no, I'm not going to think about all the things I can't have. Like, for example, if you want pizza, just make it in a healthy way. If you want tacos, make it in a healthy way. If you want cake, make it in a healthy way. There is a way to make everything and enjoy it with gladness. Okay. So I want to share something really quick because I have a feeling a lot of people are listening and they're like, okay, Kim, um, is it like, are you sure that it's okay with God for me to want to be fit? Like, is it okay to want to succeed at this? Like I have always wanted to be fit, but I've kind of struggled or maybe you just feel like success isn't for you. And what about this? Do you believe that you can succeed at your goal and that it's God's will for you? I know a lot of Christians really struggle here. So sadly, Christians don't know the word of God and what it says, and they settle for less and miss out on God's plan. So I want to share with you that I created something called God's blueprint for success. And it's rooted in biblical truth that will eliminate the confusion and set you on a path to success God's way, because knowing what God says about success is vital to our goal achievement and not knowing why so many of us struggle. We struggle with guilt about our goals or not feeling worthy to achieve them. And it's why we self-sabotage and we have confusion about God's plan for us. I want you to think about this very important question. What will you, what will happen if you don't learn what God says about success and apply it to your life? Where will you be this time next year? We can't do anything apart from God, but we can do everything in his strength. So I want you to go check it out at kimdolanletto.com success workshop to get the Bible-based blueprint that took me a lifetime to learn, um, that shows you the step-by-step -step success plan that God has for you. This is not my words. These are Bible scriptures. This is a whole, the guide for you to walk through and be like, wow, does God really say that about me? And then you, you apply it to your life. And the answer is yes. So I want you to start taking a hold of what God has for you now, friend. Okay. So I'm going to say a prayer for us. I hope that these scriptures have really helped you. And after I pray, I'm going to, as promised, share the freebie. Okay. So father God, I just lift up every woman right now who has been struggling to lose weight. Father, we link arms. We come before you and we ask you to break any bondages, any type of spiritual battles, any kind of warfare that we need to take. God, show it to us. Help us walk in your power and authority. Show us that we are stronger than our cravings, stronger than our temptations, and that this food thing isn't about what we look like. It's not about what we weigh. It is about the devil trying to steal our health, God. Don't let him win. Convict us in these moments. Show us that you are right there with us, leading and guiding us, and help us use the fruit of the Spirit. Help us walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, and help us strengthen ourselves in the Holy Spirit to know what is not of you, what is going to make us feel guilty? What is going to make us feel gluttonous? And just 
take those extremes off the table and help us live under your grace in that sweet spot where we can just say, thank you, God, for this food and enjoy it with peace and love and joy and self-control, Lord. I pray blessings over my sister's health. I pray that emotional eating disorders are broken. Body dysmorphic disorders are broken. I pray that women see themselves as so much more the numbers and what they look like, and that they see themselves through your word, God, just fill them with the power of your spirit right now and show them that how beautiful they are, that you made them and that they are so worth taking care of because you died for them so that they could live. They could live free. God help them know that in this moment that you died for them so they could live free from all of this and that you're there to repair their relationship with food and help them get fit your way. We pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Sister, I just want to share that our flesh, it will give up and quit on us every time. So we can't rely on our own strength. And that's why what I do is called like fit. Anytime you see fit in my branding, or when I talk about it, it means faith inspired transformation because a faith inspired transformation is a Christ centered, not self-centered transformation. And that's what we want. So don't cheat yourself and live your life feeling less than who God created you to be. Being unhealthy can do this to us because it's our food choices don't just affect the way that we look. They affect how we feel and how we feel about ourselves. They affect our emotions and they keep us stuck in a cycle that only God can break. And I pray that anyone who's struggling with that today, that it's broken. So Getting healthy means you put away the excuses and you ask God to help you seek him and his and health with the right motivation. Friend, what is your heart motivation for getting healthy? Write this down. If I reached my fitness goals and all of this was behind me, how would I be different? Because, you know, what would I do? Maybe you would start that company. Maybe you would feel like a happier wife and mom. Maybe you'd feel, you would just, I want you to picture right now what you would feel like and let that motivate you, the serving of God and your family and those you love so much more than those things that the enemy has used to tempt you and keep you in a cycle of self-loathing, okay? So if you allow God, he will let you know when you're starting to head down the wrong path. I'm telling you, you'll hear, you'll feel that conviction, that pause because you're, you've been in the spirit and you've been strengthening those faith muscles, okay? So if you've been unsuc unsuccessful getting healthy in the past, tell yourself this time is gonna be different and ask God for help, friend. He loves you so much. Believe in yourself because he does. Making your health, your healthy lifestyle and focusing your transformation on God, it's the right motivation and it will last because God is everlasting. Okay, so friend, as promised, I have a freebie for you. I wanna encourage you right now. We shared a lot of scriptures, we discussed a lot. And I want you to have something in front of you that will just give you that extra little push when you need it on, you know, those times when you're like, oh, I'm stuck. I feel a little down. I feel like I'm about to make a bad decision. I want you to just pull this out and look at it and be filled with God. Okay. So it's called get uh, 50 powerful Christian quotes to fuel your fitness. And you can get it right now at kimdolanletto.com forward slash quotes. You're going to get 50 powerful quotes. Okay. These are not word based, world based quotes. These are Christian quotes to motivate you with your food, with your fitness, with your body image to get you to your goal. I believe in you. God believes in you, girl. You've got this in Him. Okay. So if this episode has motivated you, if it has blessed you in any way, hit that share button. If you're uh, listening to the podcast on Apple or Spotify, just hit share and share it with a friend who needs to hear it. And while you're doing that, please give it a rating or a review. It really, really helps with the algorithm to show the strong, confident, his podcast to other people. And if you're watching on YouTube, may I please ask you to subscribe. I am trying to build my YouTube channel and it, I feel like I'm starting from scratch. So please invite your friends, please subscribe to the channel. 
like this video, leave a comment and just say, yes, this helped me. I'm sharing it with a friend and download kimdolanletto.com forward slash quotes to fuel your fitness, print that off or put it on a note on your phone and refer to it on those days when you need a little cheerleading because I'm right here to cheer you on. Okay, friend, with so much love, remember you are strong, confident. Woman.